Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video, and today we have a very cool, very popular, by the way, uh, Olemic Wayfarer 24-7. Now, um, this knife is a mid-tech version of the custom Olemic Wayfarer, uh, and there are two of those. There's a, a custom Wayfarer and then a Wayfarer Compact, and then there's this. So I guess there are three versions of the Olemic Wayfarer, this being the mid-tech and being the cheapest. Now, they're not that cheap. I think the stock, they start around 415 or 425, something like that. Um, and as you add things like these holes or like a decorative backspacer or hardware or colored anodized hardware, different blade finishes, all those kinds of things uh, begin to add to that price. Now, there are tons and tons of variations of this out there. If you look at your favorite retailer, they probably have a few different ones. And I'm fairly confident that you can still contact Olamic directly and order one with the features that you would like. I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, maybe someone can uh, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, or maybe uh, if Eugene, you're watching this, you could weigh in on that in the comments as well. Um, <clears throat> I do have a little bit of a story behind getting this knife. I've wanted a Wayfarer for some time, but when you start getting some, some different stuff happening, like this backspacer, like the holes, the price climbs really, really quickly from the stock price. So that had kind of put me off of uh, picking one of these up. And I was fortunate to find a sale on Instagram where a guy was letting this one go and it had a lot of the things that I wanted, especially I wanted one with the holes. And I wasn't really, I thought maybe an anodized backspacer, but I didn't expect something like this. This is really cool. Anyway, uh, so I messaged him and we started chatting. And in that time, I took a, I sent the picture of the knife over to Eugene at Olamic and, and asked him if the knife was legit and asked him about the, the pivot screw. The screws that were on it, the pivot hardware, had been beat up a little bit, probably just from being carried with change in the pocket, and a couple of the screws were stripped. So I, I mentioned that, and uh, Eugene said, yeah, for sure, send it over here, we'll get it all fixed up for you, uh, and everything will be good to go. And I said, hey, that's awesome. So. Uh, in the meantime, so I said, yep, I'll take the knife. And, you know, I talked to Eugene. Well, in the between that time, I, I said to him, I sent him a follow-up message saying, what if I just sent you the hardware that needs to be either replaced or fixed up or whatever? And he said, hey, yeah, no problem. Go ahead and do it, which was great. Uh, and then... <laughs> um, before I actually got a chance to, just after, I guess it was maybe the day or the day after I got the knife, I hadn't even had a chance to play with it or open it or anything and really uh, take a good look at it. He sends me a message saying, hey, just let me know what hardware you're in need of and I'll just send it to you, uh, which, uh, which was great. That, you know, avoids any custom issues, customs issues for me getting the knife in and out of Canada. And it was really good. You know, Eugene went out of his way to make sure that I was happy, even though I was not the first owner. You know, he didn't make any money, extra money off of me getting this knife, um, but he still did a really good job of offering some good customer support. So I've got to express my appreciation about that. Pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead now that you know kind of the background on this knife and get into some of the specifics. Size and weight on this guy, eight and one eighth inches overall. So. Uh, not a bad size, very comfortable for everyday carry, which is what the knife is designed for. That's why it has the name 24-7. Uh, the blade on this guy is just under three and a half inches at three and seven sixteenths. Handle is four and three quarter inches. And the weight on this when you're carrying it in your pocket is 4.7 ounces. So to me, that's not unduly heavy at all. I find that pretty comfortable to carry around. By the way, check out that backspacer again. I will show you a good close up when we uh, get to the discussion of the various features that I wanna go over with you. Okay, so starting with the blade, this blade is Elmax steel, uh, partial flat grind with a top swedge. And it's not super thick blade stock, but the way that they've ground this does allow for that full width of the stock to kind of reach out toward the tip and add just a little more strength, which is a really nice feature. Uh, makes it just a little stronger out at the tip. I wouldn't want to, you know, go and pry a door down or anything like that, 
but it's just a little extra robustness, which I do appreciate. Uh, nice and thin behind the edge on this guy, and you can see it's fairly good. You know, there's a lot of belly here, but there's also a decent amount of, the, of flat on that blade. So again, really, really just a nice knife for utility tasks. Um, the, the point is rather fine. I mean, it is the tip of a knife blade, so you don't expect it to be super thick. So like I usually say, I wouldn't want to go and drop this on concrete or, or do anything crazy with it, but uh, fairly well designed to be strong and to be very, very functional. And it is really nice and functional. That's one thing I do appreciate. By the way, they have done a really good good job in heat treating this LMAX. I know uh, one of the discussions that goes on in the knife world is that LMAX maybe isn't uh, a great steel for production knives because people sometimes have trouble uh, grinding it without taking away the temper. Uh, you know, Olamic, as it would be expected, has done a great job and this has held up really, really well. Uh, very, very sharp and it just holds that edge exceptionally well. So, by the way, that's pretty well. For a knife at this price point, you kind of expect that. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to mention before we moved on from the blade that I really like the fact there's not a whole lot of bannering. Just one little Olamic symbol right here. See if I can zoom in so you can read that Olamic Tactical. And over here it just says the steel is LMAX. Again, fairly classy. I like when, when companies don't go crazy putting uh, labels all over. I will show you, it's really, really cool. When we get to the handle, I'll show you where uh, you can find the title Wayfarer 24-7 on this knife. Probably a lot of you already know, but for those who don't, I think you'll appreciate it. Let's move on now to lockup and deployment. This is, of course, a titanium frame lock. You can see the lock bar cut out right there. Stainless steel lock bar insert with an over travel stop. You can see right at the tip of my thumb. Uh, it is a bearing pivot and a ceramic detent ball, which I do appreciate. The detent on this is pretty stiff, uh, but not horrible, okay? Uh, overall, I've got to say the action is, is nice, but it's not the most amazing action of any knife I've ever felt. Uh, this one, it's very smooth, don't get me wrong, okay? It's very, very nice feeling, uh, but it's, it's not uh, quite as free as maybe I'd like it to be. Now, one thing I wanna show you guys because it's just super cool is the detent track on this blade. If you look behind the lock bar there by the tip of my thumb, hard to see, you can kinda of spot it there. But there is a detent track in this knife so that when you unlock the knife, right when the blade, so right there, the blade hits the detent ball, okay? But what has been done with this is they've cut a groove into the blade so that the detent ball can just roll into that groove and go up onto the blade. Works really, really well and it's a great feature. I'll show you from the back. There you go. You can see there at the on the tang of the blade that divot cut out to allow for... Uh, the detent ball to get back on the blade and ride along in that track. Really, really nice feature uh, and very much appreciated. Now, a couple little nitpicks on the lock and deployment here. One is the lock bar could use some kind of jimping or something. Uh, I've noticed myself on more than one occasion go to unlock the knife and have my thumb kind of slip off or not grip very well. The other thing I've noticed is that um, the the flipper tab is a little sharp, okay? And I, you know, I have a lot of knives and I flip a lot of knives. My fingers are pretty accustomed to even some pretty stiff detents. But this guy over time can get a little uncomfortable uh, because of the way the flipper is kind of shaped like a horn, right? If you get up on it and get your finger into that little indentation and light switch it, then that's about the, then, then that's about the most comfortable way to deploy the knife. It is a bearing pivot, by the way. I don't know if I remembered to mention that or not. Uh, really, really nice snappy deployment. So if you're a fan of that, uh, you know, I would compare this to a lot of ZTs. It may even be a little bit stiffer than some ZTs, but really, really deploys with some oomph because of that stiff detent. Feels really good. And it is, you know, I've got to tell you, there is some, some joy that comes from uh, deploying this knife. It flips really, really nice and hard. So overall, um, lockup and deployment is very good. Of course, it's very solid. No play of any kind in any direction. Uh, <clears throat> and just those very minor points that I could pick on. All right. Overall, it is very, very nice.
Uh, by the way, I didn't mention, but the skeletonized flipper here is a nice feature as well to lighten up the knife and just add some intricacy to the overall look of the knife. Now, let's go on and talk about the handle. Of course, it's a titanium frame lock. Um, it is backspacer construction, but it's the kind of backspacer that you probably don't see a whole lot. These are floating backspacers. So let me, what have I got that I can put here? Let me grab a white piece of paper here and I'll put it behind. See how the backspacer is uh, open on all sides and the, the screws just kind of go through it. Really, really cool, looks awesome. And of course, the best thing is that this backspacer has been carved and anodized beautifully. Uh, absolutely gorgeous knife. Now, let me show you one of the really cool things about this. If you flip the knife over, hold on, there you go. Uh, you can see that one, the, the work, the carving work that's on the outside continues on the inside, but then right there on the Inside of the backspacer, you can see Wayfarer 24-7, and then you can see uh, a little code there, uh, likely telling us when it was made, uh, or maybe giving it a serial number. Anyway, really, really cool feature. I love that they put that title in there. Just a great little detail that adds a lot of interest to the knife. Uh, fairly large lanyard hole here. Certainly paracord would easily fit through there. Uh, this has been drilled out and that adds certainly some look. It also adds some uh, a tacti uh, tactile, not tactical, but tactile element to the knife um, and does lighten it up a little bit as well. So I definitely appreciate that. And then there's also some anodized hardware here. Uh, looking at the clip, it is a titanium clip. It's not milled, it's a standoff clip with a ceramic ball, and I've got to say, it works really, really well. Now, it's not deep carry, but you can see, if I turn the knife this way, you can see that, you, you know, your pants are going to come up to about here. So there's not a whole lot of knife sticking out at all. Uh, and it is really nice going in and out of pocket. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I remembered to, to kind of give you all the ins and outs on this that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned. I think we've pretty well covered everything. So let's go ahead now and get to some comparisons that I've got. And there are a fair number of comparisons here. You know, this is a, a segment of the market that I do kind of enjoy. So uh, let's go ahead and, and pull what I think is one of my more similar knives to this. This is the Riat Knives Torrent. Um, obviously cheaper price on this, but not a lot cheaper. Some similar design cues in terms of color for sure. Uh, of course, the Riyadh is gonna be made overseas while this is uh, made in the US. As well, this is offering you that option that we talked about before of doing some interesting um, changes to your particular knife. But again, you know, some similar knives, you know, both high-end materials, really cool, uh, kind of classy looking knives. Uh, both great for EDC. Obviously, the, the Riyadh is a little bigger and also a little heavier. All right, let's see. What else have we got here? Uh, another knife that I think kind of reminds me of this. Oh, you know what, guys? I didn't say much about ergonomics, and this reminds me. Uh, this is a knife that ergonomically really locks you in, okay? It, now, it, this is a plus or a minus, depending on how you look at it. This is definitely a handle shape that, that puts you in a particular position, okay? Your index finger's gotta go kind of right there, and this is gonna tuck into the palm of your hand just like that. There's not really, you know, in a hammer grip, it's okay, but this really is designed for more of a saber grip. Works really well in a reverse grip, not so well doing draw cuts. So let's get back now to the comparison. Sorry, I forgot that earlier, but it is a very comfortable knife. Uh, it's just that the way it's designed, very much like this one, really puts your hand in one position. And this knife, by the way, does the same thing. And I don't, don't mind it at all. Uh, so this, of course, is the Brian Tai and Friends TIE Fighter. Uh, it's a, a mid-tech as well, at least by name. Now, maybe one difference would be that um, Eugene is probably a little more hands-on with these than Brian Tai is with these. Brian is in a different country than these, so that makes it, you know, this is almost a high-end production more so than a mid-tech. But I do think it makes a good comparison because they're both fairly expensive knives. They're both um, sort of budget models of a more expensive custom. Uh, and both are really, really well made, okay, and, and in limited numbers. 
Uh, let's see, another knife that is uh, a high-end knife, but very well suited to everyday carry type of role is the Custom Knife Factory Morph. This is a great little knife. Uh, if you saw my review earlier, you know that I really, really appreciate it. I would say the action is a little nicer on the Morph than it is on the Wayfarer, uh, although both are good. They're just kind of different. Now, having worked through some of those more expensive things, let's pull out a couple of more budget options. This is the Real Steel uh, Megalodon. Uh, this is cool because it offers you all the feel and materials of a high-end knife. Uh, amazing, amazing action, uh, but for considerably less. So if you go, yeah, I like the Wayfair, but there's no way I could ever spend that on a knife. Something like this might be uh, something you'd enjoy more. I'll give you one more shot of that action. Uh, or, of course, there are any number of ZTs out there that would have sort of similar size, similar weight, similar construction, uh, just not as many variables allowable, you know, in terms of um, extra things that you could have done to it, okay? Uh, this, of course, is the 0560, but uh, there are any number of ZTs that would be fairly comparable to this guy, and probably more comparable than the 0560. Now, let's give you my sort of overall take on this knife, okay? Uh, overall, guys, this is a very, very nicely made knife. The quality is absolutely there. The materials are great. Uh, very, very comfortable in hand. Very easy to carry. Just the right size. And probably one of the coolest things about this knife is just how much variation there is. Uh, you know, of course, the footprint is basically the same, but you can do so many different things with, with handle finishes and handle variants, with the backspacer and the pocket clip and all kinds of different... You'll, you'll see, if you Google this and look around for uh, Olamic Wayfarers, you'll find so many different versions of this that pretty much anybody who wants to is going to be able to find one that is really, really suited to them. All right, so uh, I think this is a great offering. I think it, it's really, really a great mid-tech knife. One of the better ones out there, in fact. Uh, and I suspect this is going to have pretty, you know, well, let's put it this way. I understand why this has such broad appeal and why so many people love it, because they just get a lot of things right. Plus, in addition to making a really good knife, they also allow you to sort of customize it to your own uh, desires. By the way, uh, as we're wrapping things up here, uh, I didn't mention the the pivot there. Uh, all of these knives, they do have this custom proprietary pivot, but they do all ship with the hardware to adjust it. And I have taken this knife apart so I can personally attest that that hardware works really well. Sorry I didn't mention that when we were talking about uh, the lockup and deployment. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and we will talk to you soon.